All right, in part three here, I'm going to show you what the antiderivative is and then how to get the numerical value using the antiderivative. Okay, so depending upon your teacher, uh, if you're not allowed to use a graphing calculator, you're going to have to use the antiderivative to find the evaluate and the area answer. So let's first talk about what the antiderivative is. And I assume that you have seen derivatives before because what antiderivative is is you are undoing or reversing the derivative process. Okay, so when you probably first saw derivatives, your teacher made you do this h limit thing as h approaches zero and it's a lengthy process. And then there's this shortcut that you encountered or your teacher uh, told you about. And it's a real easy process. So y prime, you just simply multiply by the exponent to the coefficient and then subtract 1 from the exponent. That's a 1. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. And this becomes 0. The derivative of any constant is 0. And the reason why that is, is this is considered a 0 degree polynomial. And 0 times 5 is 0. Now if you clean this up, it's 6x plus 6. That is the, ant or that is the derivative. Another notation for y prime is dy over dx. Calculus is the mathematics of change. D stands for delta. It's the change of y with respect to the change of x. So that's, there's that little dx symbol again, which is always on a integral. Now, if you were to watch this last minute process of me doing the derivative here, if you were to watch this video in reverse, if you hit rewind here, instead of you seeing multiplication and subtraction, what you would see is if you reverse that process of multiplication and subtraction, and you watch this video in reverse, you're going to actually see addition and division. Okay? If you don't believe me, stop and try it now. But to reverse this process of multiplication and subtraction, you're actually going to be adding and dividing. And that's exactly what the, the antiderivative is, is you are undoing the derivative, the process. Okay, so if a derivative you multiply and subtract, the antiderivative you're going to be adding and then dividing. And everything revolves around the exponent. So here we go. This is to the first power. I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that exponent. This is 6x to the 0, right? I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that exponent. The 2's cancel, leaving me with negative x squared plus 6x. Now, if you do the power rule on this, you're going to get back what you started with. So you can always check your answers when you do this. It's just like when you factor and FOIL in Algebra 1. Whenever you FOIL out what you just factored, you get back to the original problem. All right, so the antiderivative for this one is the same as this one, so I'm just going to draw an arrow up. It's the same exact function here. That's the antiderivative. Now this is a binomial, so I, I reversed the derivative two times. This is a trinomial, so I'm just going to reverse the derivative three times. Remember, add and then divide. So here we go. This is a degree 2. 2 plus 1 is 3 divide by that 3. This is degree 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Divide by that 2. This is x to the, or x8 to the 0. And after I clean this up, I get this. Do the derivative of this. If you do the power rule, 3x squared divided by 3. The 3's cancel, leaving you with x squared. 3 times 2 is 6, x to the first power, and then that becomes 8. So it kind of plays tricks with your brain, because most of you probably can do the power rule in your head, and then you're reversing that process. So it's kind of shifting gears here mentally to do that. OK, now I'm going to skip over the, the antiderivative of sine and cosine. That is a totally different. Um, lesson here, but let me show you how to find the evaluate answer by hand, okay? So I'm going to show you how to get this 8 using the antiderivative. 
Now what you do is you simply take the antiderivative, okay, Notice I'm rewriting the function twice. I'm just writing the skeleton here, okay? You're going to plug in the upper bound, and you're going to subtract it from the lower bound, okay? So, and you always subtract, no matter, no matter what's in here. No matter what's in here, you're always going to subtract that. I always use brackets here to kind of separate the two things. So I take the skeleton of my antiderivative. I'm going to plug in my upper bound, which is 2, plop, plop, and my lower bound of 0 goes in here. So it's the upper bound into the antiderivative minus the lower bound in the antiderivative. The negative you don't square, and I pick 0 out of convenience. And then that becomes 8 minus 0 is 8, which is our evaluate answer. Okay? If you want to see that again, I'll do it with this guy here. That's a little bit more tedious here, but I would set up your two brackets. You're going to plug in your upper bound. In this case, the upper bound is, in the original problem, is a 1. So I'm going to put a 1 everywhere there's a little uh, placeholder. There are three variable x's here, so I have to put the 1 in three places. 1, 1, 1. And then negative 4 goes here. That's the lower bound, lower bound, and lower bound. And the rest is arithmetic. If you crunch all this out, so this is the, where the antiderivative comes into play with these integrals, okay, is to...